Thank you for the introduction. Uh, as this, uh, they already introduced me, I'm uh, Thanasia Ramaila. I know I'm not a Greek or Kemet God or anything of that sort. I'm just an easygoing uh, software developer from Cape Town in Sar uh, based at uh, Sarawo, which is the South African Radio Astronomy Observatory. So I'm part of uh, a group which is focused on developing uh, radio astronomy techniques for reducing or working with uh, radio astronomy data. So today I'll share with you uh, some of the techniques that we use in dealing with uh, the data that we get from, uh, from the instrument that uh, was built at uh, Sereo. Okay, without wasting any time, let's jump into it. Uh, and then the creator said, let there be light. <laughs> and then there was light. Uh, and now we find ourselves here. So uh, with this light, which uh, we often refer to it as the electromagnetic radiation or electromagnetic wave, it has a range of uh, frequencies or wavelengths in, uh, that in those terms. So they go from the gamma rays to the radio waves. Uh, what the Sereo uh, is uh, mostly uh, focused on is uh, the radio part of this uh, spectrum. Though, uh, as you can see, there have been uh, developments of uh, this uh, high-tech instruments over the past decades. Uh, one question that you'll be wondering about in terms of uh, where, in terms of uh, the locations this instrument should be. So uh, mostly it's determined by the atmosphere. So for example, uh, in the radio part of the spectrum, this wave uh, have no difficulty in penetrating the atmosphere. And also we know in the visible part of the spectrum, which is uh, what we are functioning with in terms of our eyes. And then the rest of uh, the other part of the electromagnetic uh, spectrum, the atmosphere doesn't allow it to uh, penetrate through. And I think we should give thanks to that because we could have long been fried <laughs> if the other, part of, uh, the other end of the spectrum was penetrating. Maybe you should be wondering what the other one. So with the other instrument which is placed on the ground, uh, that functions also in the gamma rays, but I'm not going to focus on that. It detects uh, secondary radiation from uh, the gamma rays from uh, space. So our main focus of the spectrum is the radio waves. They have many disadvantages in terms of, as, uh, as, as I mentioned, uh, they easily penetrate the atmosphere. And uh, also, they give us uh, another perspective of uh, the universe in terms of uh, what sources and objects are out there in space. <coughs> uh, so to introduce uh, the instrument that uh, the Sereo built, which is called the Meerkat. Uh, the Meerkat was inaugurated uh, last year, uh, 2018, by the uh, deputy president of the country. And uh, it is located in uh, the Northern Cape, in the Karoo, just close to Carnarvon. Uh, this instrument is controlled from Cape Town, which is where uh, our offices or the observatory is uh, based. And it's uh, about uh, 500, above 500 kilometers distance. And uh, another, reason, another reason why this uh, telescope is called the Meerkat is because there are these uh, little cute guys at the desert or in the desert. And also, there was a prototype project uh, just before the Meerkat 1, which was called Cat 7. So it was like Karu Array Telescope. And then, with uh, building more of these radio dishes, they uh, append, uh, prefixed with uh, the word Mir, which means more, in case you didn't know. Uh, so that's why the Meerkat. So it's like more cat, more of this uh, radio type uh, kind of uh, telescopes. So in terms of the specifications, so there are 64 of these. 
located in the Karoo, which have uh, the base, so they are separated with a maximum distance of about eight, kilo eight, eight kilometers. Uh, and then at the moment, they are equipped with uh, receivers, which function in the L-band, and uh, they are capable of, uh, uh, or they, they use uh, correlators, which uh, actually use uh, this number. So these are uh, the uh, 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 way in which uh, the, 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 the spectrum is, is chopped out. So it's like it's uh, saved in different channels. So there are three modes uh, that are available. And also there are plans, or actually they're in progress on adding uh, additional uh, receiver bands, which I'm not going to get into in this talk. Uh, so this kind of instruments uh, do uh, generate uh, a huge amount of data, and uh, it requires uh, very good techniques and also uh, softwares which can uh, actually deal with this kind of data without breaking or actually which will work without oh. <laughs> which which will which, which will uh work without uh, any hurdle of uh, uh which will provide uh, users with uh, uh easy usage so that uh, you don't have to struggle in terms of uh, dealing with the data so uh, we, we compiled the uh, workflow wish list, so just a bit of a background. So uh, sometimes the workflow will be referred to as a pipeline. So basically you have uh, a bunch of softwares which uh, work together, and you have input data, and then you get some output data. But in between, there are different uh, techniques uh, being applied to your data in order to get your uh, output uh, products. So in terms of level one, level one, if you, d I mean, even in, uh, uh, in software uh, engineering, we require that uh, our, s our softwares that we build are easy to install. So we want these pipelines or, or workflows to be easy to install, which is the first level, and easy to use, reproducibility, which uh, uh, basically means that uh, if you have a data set and uh, you got results, I could take your data set and then you give me the kind of software or the software that you use to reduce the data and I'll run it on my, on my machine or somewhere else and then I get exactly the same results that you got. And then level two, we require uh, the workflow or the pipelines to be well documented because sometimes you know uh, documentation might be an issue in using other softwares. So we don't want to uh, make it stressful for the users. And then second point is it must be portable. So portable also meaning that uh, it could uh, work on uh, cross platforms in that you don't have to be fixed to like one, uh, to one uh, system. Like I said, if you give me your data, give me your software, I shouldn't have any problem installing it on my personal machine. And then configurable, configurable will refer to if you have a pipeline, it shouldn't be like <laughs> that static. I'm not sure if it's the right way to use, but you should be able to maneuver. Like it, it shouldn't just be it goes in and then it goes out, but uh, the user can uh, maneuver or add other functionalities or remove other uh, unnecessary step or even add more functionality to the workflow. And then. And then in terms of level three, which is uh, uh, the important part as well since we're now moving into uh, the big data era, we want uh, this uh, workflows or uh, software pipelines to be scalable in such that uh, with this uh, vast amount of softwares that are being developed and this uh, vast amount of data that we're dealing with and the infrastructure improving, we should be able to we should be able to uh, use uh, our computing resources uh, optimally. And then smart with resources uh, as well. Uh, if you have a pipeline, uh, you, we, we should uh, make sure that uh, 
we, as I say, uh, use our computing resources efficiently, which means uh, also this will save us time in terms of uh, processing the data. And then uh, another aspect is uh, the quality assessment. So with the quality assessment, as I said, so you have a, a pipeline. So you'd uh, at different stages or at different uh, points in your reduction pipeline, you'd want uh, some quality checks. So you'd want to do some quality checks in order to like know what's, uh, how the steps have gone through. So you'd uh, run a, a certain process which does uh, a certain kind of reduction and then plug, uh, so what, what we do, like you plug in a quality assessment tool and that will uh, evaluate the results from that stage so that at the end you get like reports of your quality assessment and you would tell if a certain process in the pipeline didn't go well. So uh, we use uh, this framework called uh, Stimela. So Stimela is another word. Uh, actually, Stimela is a, is, is a word for a train. Uh, so if you can see, so there's a, so it, it offers a, an opportunity to. S sorry to cut in. Uh, we're looking for Jan, who's supposed to be speaking in Boundary. Jan, are you in this room? Uh, sorry. Orestes or something. Orestes or something. Nope, I'm terribly sorry. Please continue. Okay, thank, thank you very you. much. So this framework uh, offers us the advantage of uh, providing a container. Uh, so it, it gives us access to these uh, software tools. So there's a range of software tools being developed in the radio astronomy community. So it gives us uh, access to those. So uh, what it does is for each software tool, it will uh, create a container for that. So you make a, a Docker image or yeah, we, you make a Docker image and then every process will be uh, executed inside a container. So all the softwares that we'll be dealing with, we make sure that we, uh, uh, we execute them, we, we execute them in Docker containers. And uh, this framework is uh, purely written in Python. And also it gives you uh, an, an opportunity to uh, interact with those tools using a, a, a Python interface. So uh, in terms of uh, the development that goes on uh, is that so we have uh, in our team um, uh, people uh, focusing on different uh, aspects of uh, the pipeline and of the development of the software. So uh, most of the softwares are Python and uh, we install them directly from PyPy. And also with our software development, we make sure that uh, they end up uh, in, in the PyPy uh, archive. Thank you. So uh, <coughs> this uh, software projects do end up uh, in the pipe package. So in terms of uh, our software development, so we also use uh, uh, continuous integration. We use uh, specifically Travis to uh, do our deployment to the same uh, archive that I'm showing now. So uh, as part of our testing, so we make sure that uh, our softwares are Python uh, are standard with uh, the Python, uh, uh, the PyPy projects. So we use uh, Travis to do some testing of our software and also to deploy. So for every tag of our software that we release, it will end up in, uh, it will automatically end up in the PyPy archive using uh, Travis. And then another part uh, of the development project uh, focus on developing Debian packages. So some of the softwares that we use are not Python, like you get some C uh, packages that uh, need to be uh, compiled. So 
we do the building steps using uh, uh, Debian packaging tools, and then we have a uh, PPA uh, site where those uh, packages also end up there. So this is uh, mainly for Ubuntu. So the Debian packages that we, that we develop are for Ubuntu. And uh, we, 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 we release uh, each version for all the LTS systems from uh, 1404 till 1804. So this, these are just part of like where we uh, get, uh, where we uh, put our softwares in terms of uh, uh, pu public, public access and also for easy uh, version control. So another aspect is uh, Docker. So we had uh, the PyP, we have Docker. I mean, we had uh, uh, Debian packages. And then now with Docker, uh, for each software tool, we write a, a Docker file for that which you can later on execute as a container which specifically has only uh, software and uh, only the specific software with, with its requirements. So a typical Docker file will look uh, as follows. So uh, for example, as I say, at, at the current stage, we are working on the second release of uh, the, the 1804. We had our first uh, release by the end of last year. And then we're working on another one which should be uh, released by the end. So by the end of this year. So uh, this is a typical Docker file. This is, so the Docker files are uh, a bit modularized in a sense that we don't have just one uh, Docker file uh, with everything in it, but we modularized every, 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 every package or every software. And then, so for this one, this is the base base image. Uh, yeah, basically what, what you do is, th th uh, this is, this is the, s the typical setup where uh, the uh, first, uh, so the first line, you, we get the Ubuntu 4 and then we add uh, some uh, ab uh, install and upgrade scripts, and then we do an upgrade, and then you do a Docker install for software properties, so that later you can add the, the repo there. So the repo there will specifically be the one for Ken, which is the one, uh, which is our uh, can uh, PPA, where we uh, package, where we uh, put the, the package software, and then the second file will be this part. Now this starts to uh, integrate into Stimela, so we have uh, the base of. Uh, so this base, the second base, now says it inherits from the the main one. This secondary one now uh, serves as a base for all the softwares that we will be working with in our pipelines. So for a, a typical one will be as simple as that. So you inherit from uh, the base. So when you build it, we'll call it the Stimula base, which we build it from that, but it inherits that one. And then the, the typical software tool that will, what that will install, say AO Flagger, and it will directly come from the uh, repository that uh, is uh, mainly maintained by Ken. And then it's, uh, when, when we run the pipelines, it just execute the container, which uh, is uh, b uh, specifically built for this software tool. Uh, and uh, in the uh, past uh, decade, the most, uh, or even currently, the most uh, used software tool was CASA, or is still CASA. And uh, this provides most of the software tools that you might need to perform your reductions. But uh, that's not the end of a story, as uh, the community is getting diverse, and there's more software tools being written and being added to the community. And sometimes these softwares, uh, you might find they're developed by uh, scientists or astronomers, and they are not easy to use for a so they are not used. Uh, they are not okay. <laughs> so they are not easy to use for uh, uh, typical users, which are not uh, advanced in software, like building uh, softwares, and 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 that. So you might struggle with that. So now, as uh, software developers and, and software engineers, we come in, and then that's why we package these softwares for them. So we do 
provide them that service of packaging the software for them so that it's easily accessible and installable by uh, the rest of the community. So these packages have been coming online, which uh, actually perform various uh, tasks. There are, there are some which might perform the same uh, task. Like, for example, you get uh, different imaging tools which uh, use uh, slightly different techniques. And as a user, you, you want uh, that uh, freedom to choose what software. <laughs> so as a user, you want that uh, free freedom to choose uh, what software you want to use for your, for your, for your reductions or for your pipelines. And uh, with this kind of model, so with this kind of model, it also allows you to easily compare different softwares which do the same thing, like you can run the pipeline and then you can uh, run uh, your, your processes through uh, two different softwares to do the same thing and then compare the results afterwards to see how which one uh, how each one performs and As I say there are still more of these softwares coming online and uh, They should be accessible to the radio community So uh, as I mentioned uh, this uh, software tools uh, are run in containers uh, We use a docker Actually, Docker was the initial uh, container technology that we opt for. And uh, even our uh, Docker files, we prepare them in a Docker-style format. And uh, you can still run it with Docker. So these are all the uh, technologies that are offered. So once you install uh, the framework, you can be able to access any uh, container technology based on uh, what is supported on your institutions or uh, on your machine. Uh, so the singularity, singularity is mostly favored by uh, or for scientific applications. And uh, uh, the other reason why we started uh, exploring other technologies because uh, with uh, the Docker, so there have been a bit of a shortcoming in terms of Docker uh, that uh, you need a uh, root privilege to run containers. So Singularity doesn't actually require that. And uh, UDocker is a purely Python uh, uh, software, software tool that is able to execute uh, Docker containers without also requiring uh, the, the, the root privilege. And this was uh, one of an option as well to put out there in terms of uh, uh, administrators who, uh, who, who, have, uh, who have concerned in t and concerns in terms of uh, security issues in running uh, Docker, like giving all the users on your machine root privilege it might not be a good idea. And then Podman, which is a recently integrated uh, container technology. So with this, I'm trying to say, so with any software, I mean, with any container technology that is supported on your machine or at the institution, uh, this can be easily integrated into the system, and then you just use that uh, uh, container technology to run all the uh, containers or softwares that uh, are provided. So the way uh, stimuli is structured is that, as I mentioned, so we have PPA, uh, yeah, we have PPA, which is Ken Suite, and then we have PyP. All these softwares come from uh, all these archives, and uh, they are written into uh, uh, into uh, Docker, for example, this is no longer only the only option that we have. So this application are put into containers and then are uh, executed using Python. So if you have a Python interface, you can easily uh, just start uh, using these uh, software tools if you install the framework. So how it will typically look is, so you have your stimulus, so you install stimulus, so stimulus is the framework itself. You import stimulus and then you define your I.O. So that's where your data will be located and all the output will be. And then you create your recipe object. So you can, uh, the idea is you can add many recipes to your, to your main, to your, to your, so you can add uh, tasks to your recipe and those tasks can be executed in any order of your choice. For example, here we have uh, this uh, Ragavi. So they are placed in, uh, so Ragavi uh, is, a, visualization tool 
and say you want to use Ragavi, so you basically what you're gonna uh, put in terms of the parameters is define a dictionary like that, and this is the same as what you do on the command line, like Ragavi, and then you'll say uh, dash dash table, you give all those information, but now uh, you have uh, an opportunity to uh, write that in a Python script. And then after that, you just simply run that. Uh, and then uh, there was also a new development of uh, Drastically, so it's just uh, a wrapper on Stimela. Since, well, uh, not all people who uh, deal with uh, redu uh, uh, reducing data uh, programmers, so this is just uh, a, a tool which will help you uh, to build a pipeline with only clicks, so you don't have to write all those JSONs and imports and stuff, but you can just simply do that. But if you're comfortable with that, you can write your own uh, Python script. Otherwise, you can just opt for that, which uh, I thought it would be also a nice tool for uh, teaching uh, graduate students on how to work with uh, radio data. So all those uh, softwares are readily there. So you just install the framework, which is the rep of Stimel, and then uh, you configure it. You get all those softwares that you want. And then you can select one, and then what you do, you just populate the parameters. You tune it however you want. And then what you can do, you can add to create uh, different chunks of uh, different processings. And then after that, you can just run. And then it will run all those tasks. And then uh, there's Mia Cathy. So Mia Cathy is a new development uh, of a so Mia Cathy is a new development. Uh, of a production pipeline, which uh, is still private at the moment, but we're working on uh, uh, a, a release of that. So this pipeline is uh, developed to work with uh, radio, uh, in the, uh, uh, radio interferometry data. And it's not specifically for Meerkat, because uh, we have uh, a, a vast number of instruments, as I mentioned. So uh, if you're working with a certain instrument, also it's a radio telescope, you can be uh, able to use this software to uh, reduce your data. Uh, it's configured using a YAML file. So uh, those parameters, as, uh, as I showed, that you can set for different software tools, you have a YAML file, and then you just uh, populate it according to that specific task which uh, runs that software. And uh, I can tell you it's easy to install and use. You just install it, and then, because this now is a readily made pipeline, so you just install it. What you do, there's a field for input. Uh, so there's work uh, towards uh, making it that easy to use in such a way that the YAML file, you get a more default YAML file set by people who have experience in using the data. And what you do, you just input your data. And then the magic happens, you get your output files. And then, as I said, it's well documented, so you can access uh, the read the docs. So the documentation is made public, but it's still fairly under development. Uh, this is the team, uh, or part of the team, uh, that is working on the Mercati pipeline. So it's uh, mainly a collaboration between uh, Italy and South Africa. So we have uh, this biannual meetings. Uh, to like to have a, a, a week full where we focus on the pipeline, uh, yeah. So this this was uh, so one 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 time they do uh, visit us here in South Africa and then one time we visit them there. So yeah, this is part of the team. And how the workflow works is you have your so it's divided into what we call workers. So you have your uh, data ingest worker, which is uh, just receive your data and then get some information like what, what are your observation uh, configuration and all that. And then there's a worker that does uh, flagging. And then there's a worker that does uh, cross calibration. So cal calibration, uh, you, it calibrates your data. Uh, and then self calibration is also a technique which is used to further improve uh, your your dynamic range of your images, or uh, just improve your images. And then uh, 
so in going forward, we can do uh, a continuum subtraction. So it, it, it can also be used for a spectral line uh, observations where you want to image uh, specific lines uh, that your source emit in, and then you do your source finding, and then you do your characterization of your sources, what, what sources you have and the positions and all the information that you need, and then it generates uh, reports, and then you get your uh, output uh, products. So these workers themselves, they have different tasks inside uh, which execute containers, but these are just like an overview uh, kind of uh, representation of what the different stages of the pipelines are. Just in a nutshell, so this is every task within, for example, if you have the line imaging stuff, so this, is, this will be the, con uh, the, the worker which does that, but it has like different tasks that uh, do uh, specific uh, uh, processes. And everything is uh, modularized in a Docker uh, container. And then you get your input, and then you get your output. Uh, some of the achieved uh, workflow li uh, wish list that I showed in the beginning, I can tell you we ticked uh, most of the boxes. Uh, currently, the work is focused on scalability and uh, being smart with uh, our computing resources. Uh, yeah. Uh, so in terms of uh, some of the results that uh, we have currently at the moment uh, from using or from users using the pipeline. So there have been observations by Meerkat. So for example, this uh, three are from the Meerkat, that, that one at the, at the bottom, the J2026, is from the VLA, which is uh, an instrument uh, in in, in, in the United States. So this just shows that uh, our pipeline also accommodates uh, other observatories to use, uh, to, to use the pipeline to do their reductions. Uh, and then just a summary, so Meerkat is really changing our view of the radio sky because uh, it has uh, good uh, resolutions. So we can uh, basically see the sky in detail and uh, as, as we are now moving into the big data era, automated pipelines are probably the way to go. And uh, as we're working in a scientific environment, we do require a reproducibility of results. And uh, stay tuned for the public release of Meerkat. If you want to contact the group, there's an email. And uh, on that note, uh, the Cereo is hiring. If you are a software developer, hit the link and uh, you can be sorted. That's the end of the talk. Uh, thank you for the nice talk. Questions, suggestions, one, two, three. Okay, uh, as the announcement that was made at uh, uh, the previous talk, that all the speakers and the organizers must go down for the group pictures at uh, 12.30 sharp. Not 12.30, past 33 or something, 12.30. Okay, one, two, three. Sorry? Yeah, organizers and speakers. Uh, 12.30. Uh, thanks, thanks for the talk. Do you mind going back to the slide where you had uh, Docker images and, 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 and? You mean the files? Yeah, 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 where you showed files. Yes, they. Uh, quick question, how do you determine a uh, fully deterministic system? Because obviously, the more you update your software, uh, I, for instance, as a, someone wanting to do the reduction, I would install that and probably uh, end up installing the latest software, uh, which had bugs or whatever, I mean, just for example. So how do you handle a fully deterministic system, like pinning and all that? Yeah, I think that's a that's a great question. So, uh, what happens is this all this stuff are brought to you by Steamella. So uh, they do different version releases. So, for example, uh, I think we are a bit ahead now, but we had a release one two zero. So uh, each uh, Steamella release it's also based uh, or tagged with uh, specific. Uh, so, uh, software images that 
will link to that uh, specific software. So if we know uh, 120 used, uh, if you used 120, you know the date of the release, probably you can easily know uh, what, what uh, or you can just take that. So what you can do basically is if you know uh, what release version that you want to use, you can basically just get that release version. And then that will get you all the uh, specific uh, Docker con yes, containers that you're going to run. So that will be specifically pinned for that version release. Hi there. Um, so this is with respect to the um, scalability uh, component you mentioned. I was wondering, what is the underlying execution engine of the system? Uh, I mean, what do you do? What, where's the high performance part? What thing does the actual computation? Is so it Spark? Is it uh, streaming technology? Is it your own homegrown technology? What is it? Yeah, so, so what, what, uh, what basically happens, so some of this software, so we have like this software is being developed, can be outside the institution or within. So uh, we can run through, like for, exa for example, this, uh, it's a specific software developed by somebody different, or it might be from within. Maybe it, it works in a specific format. But uh, now, in terms of how we're going to be dealing with uh, the data, so is so you run, we write the whole framework is uh, Python. So you might have, uh, for example, different um, or multiple data sets. So it, typically, how we started is. So the way you'll process the data set is probably in sequential order, but it's everything is run in Python. Now, now we want to find uh, easy ways in which we can actually uh, run them in parallel or also uh, using uh, distributed uh, clusters, which like uh, execute uh, processes on different nodes. I'm not sure if I answered your question. Okay, yes, we can do that. Ah. Uh, thanks for the talk. Um, um, just a quick question. With the um, Stimula system, do I need to install each and every software that I need, or does it uh, install every all of them at once, like your CASA and every, everything else? Does, uh, it come, does, it, does it come with all the softwares? Uh, yes. So what happens, you uh, do, for example, that would be an easy uh, install command like pip install stimela. And then once you have pip install stimela, there's uh, a command that you can run to do a stimela pool. So what stimela pool basically does, it pulls all the images uh, from the Docker Hub. And once you have them on your system, you can start writing your script to execute uh, those uh, software tools, which will run in containers. So once you do a Stimela install, you do a Stimela pool, you get all the images on your, on your machine, and then you can easily execute that uh, however you want. Right, thanks. Uh, another question, uh, I'm not sure if uh, your response to the uh, previous uh, uh, question was relating to the one I'm asking now. Okay. Um, are you in future planning to have concurrent softwares running at the same time for the inputs that you put in, in Stimula, for instance, you have CASA or RF, uh, other ins uh, softwares at the same time with outputs coming out at the relatively the same same time. Uh, yes. Yeah, so and how intensive will that be on your systems? Yeah, that's why we're looking, uh, firstly, that's why we're looking at uh, uh, exploiting uh, this uh, distributed systems which have multiple nodes in order to uh, run process like that. But mostly, uh, so in a pipeline, uh, there's a, a sequence or a chain of events happening. So maybe some processes might not be run in, uh, at the same time, per se, because it's going to be run later on in the stage. But say we're doing this flagging. So with the flagging, we remove bad data from our, our I mean, we remove uh, bad data from our data. So what, 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 what will basically happen, the developers of this tool, they can develop it in such a way that it uh, uses, uh, like you say, uh, uh, co uh, con concurrent processes to deal with that. But how we will use that in our, in our, 
in our pipeline is that say you have uh, multiple uh, data sets. So uh, we, 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 we want to be able to run, so we start multiple containers, which will run probably the same process, but on different data sets. That's currently like the work which is under progress. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thanks uh, for the talk. My question relates to the Mierkati data pipeline. So you said that, uh, I just want to know what the, the data products for the pipeline is after it finishes running, and then how long would the pipeline take from where you give it the data ingest to where it produces your data product? That's it. Okay, thanks for the question. So, uh, the typical pro product, so depending on your observations, because we have uh, different uh, proposed uh, observations, so the data set format is the same, but obviously the uh, the sources which are being observed could be different. So, for example, you'll get a, a typical observation of a, uh, a galaxy, but the focus being to observe uh, the hydrogen or the neutral hydrogen content of that galaxy. So, your goal will be to produce uh, images at different frequencies to kind of trace uh, the uh, the dynamics of uh, your galaxy. So typically what will happen, you get your data, and uh, as I say, it runs through uh, all the processes. I'm not sure if, uh, should, should I? No, but I'm uh, just interested in the data product. Okay, yes, and then finally what you'll get there, you'll get images. And as I say, there's source characterization, so you get uh, probably a file which uh, gives you all the details of all the sources that were detected in your field. A FITS file and then images at the end? Uh, a FITS file, yes. Okay. I mean, you still have, yeah, yeah, a FITS file, yeah. Oh, okay, uh, just make it quick. Um, another question. Um, have you, have at this stage, considered uh, the use of uh, software like Stimela outside the realm of astronomy entirely? Um, maybe. Um, in other fields, or maybe for um, other industries? I'm not sure if I get that. So you say besides Stimela? Well, the actual concept of Stimela being yes. used outside radio astronomy. Uh, yes. So for example, there's a CWL. So CWL is like common workflow languages which is, uh, I mean, it's used in, uh, in many disciplines, so it's also uh, a standard in which you can uh, basically write uh, uh, a workflow, and uh, that is, uh, it's, it's, I would say it's multidisciplinary if in that sense, or it, it's a standard which is used by anyone probably, Stimulate itself, it's uh, also moving towards uh, that kind of uh, uh, model or standard. So I'm not sure if I, I, I'm answering your question. Okay, uh, thank you very much. But before that, there's a general announcement here uh, that for those who are planning to go attend the talk for Jan Orestes. And the, and the talk was understanding how a malware works using Python. Uh, the talk has been canceled for the images. Something happened to him. Uh, OK. Let us uh, approach the, the speaker and ourselves for coming through. Thank you uh, for the speakers.